today we're going to start on our back. So let's go ahead and lie down on our back. And before we actually start, make sure you've got two blocks and a blanket somewhere easily accessible in case if you wish to have these props. <coughs> okay. And once you find yourself on your back, go ahead and cactus your arms or just tee them out to the right and to the left. The legs can be long or the knees can be bent. And we're just gonna take the first minute here to notice what it feels like to allow the body to just drop into the support beneath you. So noticing first, if you can just let every bone of the body become heavy. Got about 206 of those and just see if you can let all of those bones just drop into the floor. And then as the bones become heavier and more settled into the ground beneath you, start to notice how you can soften the muscles, how you can start to soften the viscera, the organs in the body. And again, as we start to allow the bones to settle and as we allow the muscles to soften, that frees up the movement of our breath. Now in our practice today, I'd like you to breathe very deliberately and we'll set the intention here and try to carry it through the whole practice. So you'll inhale into the upper chest, into the ribs, and then down towards the abdomen. And then you'll exhale, drawing the belly back towards the spine, softening your ribs and melting the chest. And we'll just do that. So breathing into the chest, the collarbones into the ribs into your belly and then softly allowing the belly to fall back towards the spine the ribs to soften around the spine and the sternum to melt away from the chin now as you continue to do this for a few more breath cycles i'd like you to notice if you want to invite in a gentle ujjayi pranayama toning the back of the throat so as you inhale your Still breathing up into the chest, wide into the ribs, down into the abdomen. And then as you exhale, you're inviting the navel to the spine, softening the rib cage, softening the sternum. And we'll continue like that for just about another 15 seconds or so. And you're just allowing the breath to just be calm and steady. And this will remind you moment to moment how your awareness is, how the mind is. Then at the end of your next exhalation, gently bend your knees and plant your feet firmly on the floor. Go ahead and stay with your breath, letting it still be consistent, letting it still be smooth. And then from here, just draw the knees into your chest and give yourself a hug. Hands come to the front of your shin bones and just pull your knees into your chest. You might rock a little bit right to left. You might stay completely still, but you're allowing that little bit of hip flexion as you imprint your spine into the floor. Awesome. So go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Bring your hands onto the top of each shin. So right hand, right shin, left hand, left shin. Keep your knees bent. And then inhale, reach your toes towards the floor, straightening your arms. And then exhale, pull your knees into your chest, pull your shins into your chest. And you just got four of those. So the knees stay bent, hands stay connected to the tops of the shin bones. This is just to open up and prepare the low back for what's to come. Yep. And then the next time the knees come into the chest, go ahead and pause there, giving yourself one more gentle hug. Great. From here, open the arms out to the right and to the left. Actively flex through both of your feet and hug your knees, ankles, and shins together. And then you might lift your heels up just a little bit so they're above the knees. You can also straighten the legs as much as you want to, but you'll take a big breath in here. And as you exhale, lower the legs over to your left and let them hover 
about a third of the way down, keep squeezing bottom knee into top knee, taking in a deep breath. On your next inhalation, you'll come back through center. And then exhale, lowering the legs over to the right about a third of the way or about a third of the way down. And you're pressing the right knee foot into the left knee foot. And your next in breath, you'll come back through center and exhale over towards your left. We'll just do this about two more times. And you're taking a complete round of breath here, seeing if you can breathe still into the upper chest, into the ribs, and then down into the belly. On your next in breath, come back through center. And then exhale over to the right. And again, the bottom leg presses into the top leg. You're rotating through the rib cage as you hug your navel into your spine. And next in breath, come back through center. And one more time, each set on your own. And you're just Paying attention to how the breath is starting to move in your body. For version two of a line and hold, we do a little bit more dynamic movement before we hold a posture. And it just enables us to start to warm and lubricate the body in a different way. It also allows us to ground the mind in a very different way. So you're just noticing what you notice as you're doing these now. And then the next time you're back to center, you'll just gently release your feet to the floor and make sure they're hip distance apart. You can now slide a block between your thigh bones if you'd like, and then bring your hands alongside your hips. Awesome sauce. With your feet hip distance apart, we're gonna take four sets of these. Inhale, push down through your feet, lift your hips, lift your arms up and over your head. And as you exhale, keep the hands on the floor, but lower your pelvis all the way back down. Nice job. Next in breath, push through the feet, lift the hips high. And as you exhale, hands and hips back to your starting position, hands alongside your hips, pelvis on the floor. We'll just do four sets of these. So inhale, push through the feet, lift your hips, lift your arms. As you exhale, keep the hands on the floor, but roll down the spine bone by bone by bone. Nice work. Then you'll inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips. And exhale, lower hands and hips back to that starting position. And you've got three more sets on your own. And you're just noticing how you can breathe with this movement. So that as you inhale and lift the hips, and the arms, they both reach the apex at the same time. And then as you exhale and lower that spine, the pelvis hits as the breath empties. And then you'll inhale and lift your hips again. And exhale slowly, lower down. Cool. And you're just checking in and noticing what you notice. How is your body feeling? How is the breath moving through your body? The next time your hands are alongside your hips, just pause there. Walk your shoulders underneath you and then inhale, push down through the feet, lift your hips high. Once the hips are high, you'll walk the shoulder blades underneath you even more, but make sure they're still coming up towards your ears and then maybe interlace the hands or not. And this will be our first hold. So continue to push down through the big toe mounds, hugging the inner thighs together towards that block. Press into your pinky toes and lift your outer hips up. Continue to see if you can breathe into the back of the body. So you're still breathing into the chest, into collarbones, into ribs, into belly. And then from belly, from ribs, from chest. And you'll just pause and breathe here. Noticing if you can remain still with the gaze on some fixed point above you on the ceiling. And then continue to hear and notice the sound and the quality of your breath.
We've got about four more steady breath cycles here. Then at the end of your next exhalation, gently unclasp your hands, untuck your shoulders, and bring your pelvis back down to the floor and pause. Just notice what you notice. Gently remove that block and just extend your legs long in front of you. And again, just notice what you notice. Reach your right arm alongside your ear. Roll over onto your right side into a semi-fetal position and continue to roll yourself all the way up to hands and knees. Now, once you get to hands and knees, highly encourage the placement of blocks towards the top outer corners of your space. Highly also encourage you to pad your knees with a blanket if that feels appropriate for you. And then from hands and knees, make sure you spread wide through the fingers. Yeah, and then we'll take a few cats and cows here. So just inhale, arch the spine, gaze forward, lowering your belly to the floor. And then exhale, round through the spine, tuck your chin to your chest, your tailbone towards your knees. And you'll just do two more sets like this on your own. Noticing how smooth and continuous you can make the breath. Awesome sauce. And we're going to go ahead and add on. Next time you're in cow pose, tuck your toes under and stay there. Take a big breath in here and then exhale. Start to push your hips back towards downward facing dog knees. Still super bent. Nice job. Inhale, come back to hands and knees position. And then exhale, round through your spine, cat pose. Inhale, return to cow pose. And then exhale, hips high, downward facing dog. You have four sets of these. This next set, see if maybe you can make your inhalation a five count breath. So five count to come to hands and knees. And then see if you can make it five counts to articulate into cat pose. And then notice if you can make it five counts to press back to downward facing dog. Yeah. The next time you're a down dog, it'll be a six count inhalation to come forward to hands and knees. Followed by a six count exhalation into cat pose. Followed by a six count inhalation into cow pose. And then six counts back to downward facing dog. And you've got two more sets on your own, maybe the next that becomes a seven count inhalation followed by a seven count exhalation. And we're using this as a means to really sort of tether our mind to the present moment and tether our mind to our body. So we can have body, mind and breath all connected. And then on your last set, you might find that it's an eight count inhalation followed by an eight count exhalation. And the next time you make your way to downward facing dog, we'll go ahead and pause. Here's our second hold. Nice job. So once you find yourself now in downward facing dog, let's go ahead and push down through the L shape of our hands. Hug those two points towards each other. 
Isometrically suck the heels of the hands back to your toes, your toes forward towards the heels of your hands. Lift up through your happy little armpits and wrap the triceps to the floor. From there, push the hands down and forward even more to lift your hips up and back even more. And then pick a steady point at which you can rest your gaze. Now in this shape, we'll return to that breathing pattern we started with at the very beginning. So you'll inhale into the collarbones, wide into the ribs, and then into your belly. And then you'll exhale from the belly, from the ribs, from the chest. And we're inhaling into collarbones, into ribs, into abdomen. And then we're exhaling, emptying the belly, softening the ribs, melting your sternum. And you'll just notice what you notice here. The body will start to talk to you. You might find that you want to wiggle or the gaze might start to just float around. And as best as you can, can you notice that? And then just come back to this simple three-part breath, allowing that to anchor you in this present moment. This work with the breath is really trying to set us up for our final meditation, but it's also treat or teaching us and training us how to regroup and regather when things happen off the mat in the rest of our lives so that we can remember that we can pause, we can breathe, we can refocus. We've got another four steady breath cycles here. And again, just checking in and noticing what you notice. How is the breath? How is the body? And how is the mind slash heart? Nice work. As soon as you exhale, lower your knees to the mat, hands and knees. Step your right foot between your hands and you might use your blocks here, you might not, it's totally up to you. Now, tuck the back toes under, bring your spine all the way up to vertical and let your right hand rest on the top of your right thigh, swing your left arm up and overhead. And we're gonna take about four of these. So as you inhale, you'll be coming forward a little bit. And as you exhale, you'll press yourself back. And this is just for you. So inhale, left arm swims forward, pelvis slides forward a bit. Exhale, left arm lowers down and pelvis shifts back. And you're just noticing again where you can steady and rest the gaze as we start to open the shoulder joints very specifically. And as we start to notice what's happening on the front of your left hip flexor, left thigh. And again, you're just following your own breath. Okay. We'll go ahead and hold this next one. Inhale, swim your left arm up and overhead. Pause here, push down into your front foot, push down into your back knee, hug those points together, and then see if you can pick one gaze point, one millimeter above eye level. And again, we're gonna focus on breathing into our collarbones, into our ribs, and into our belly, and then exhaling from the belly, softening the ribs, melting the sternum. Inhaling into ribs, wide into chest, down into navel. Exhaling, drawing navel in, softening front ribs in and back, melting your sternum down. And you'll just notice what you notice here. Calm, steady breath. We've got about four more breath cycles here. See if you can soften anything that doesn't need to work. The end of your next exhalation, lower your left hand to the floor, lower your right hand to the floor. Highly encourage the use of blocks at this point. You do whatever works for you. Go ahead and tuck the back toes under and straighten the back leg long. 
Awesome, stop. Draw that front knee over the center of your front foot. Squeeze your back glute a lot and lift up through your inner left hamstring. Now inhale, gaze forward towards the top of your space. And then exhale, start to straighten your front leg, shift your pelvis back. And you've got four sets of these. So inhaling, coming forward, reaching back through your left heel, bending your front knee. And then exhale, shift your pelvis back, straighten that front leg long. Nice work. Two more, inhaling, coming forward. Keep the back leg so active both ways. Exhaling, shifting the pelvis back. Yep, one last time, inhale, coming forward. And exhale, shifting back. Nice work. One more set, inhale, coming forward. And then this time as you shift your weight back, we're gonna take our next hold here. So keep the front leg straight, draw the outer right hip back, top of your right shin bone forward. And you might need to walk your blocks back and in a little bit so they're underneath your shoulders. Yep. And then see if you can push your right big toe down and forward. Reach your sternum forward and lift the head enough so that your head is in line with your shoulders. So one long line, yep, from head to shoulders to hips. And then again, just as we did in the other shapes, breathe into the collarbone, breathe into the ribs. Breathe into your belly, and then exhale from the belly, from the ribs, from the sternum. Big breath into collarbones, wide into ribs, down into navel, and then exhaling from the belly button, softening the rib cage and melting the sternum. Nice work. You've got another two breath cycles here. On your next in breath, shift your weight forward, bend the front knee. As you exhale, plant your palms and step back, downward facing dog. Three steady breaths before we switch sides. And you're just noticing what you notice here. How is the right? How is the left? Nice work. Next in breath, bend your knees and lower your knees to the mat. And then as you exhale, step that left foot between your hands, maybe hands on blocks, maybe not. Nice, cool. From there, perhaps you tuck the back toes under and then bring the spine all the way up to vertical. Plant your left hand on the top of your left thigh and reach your right arm up and overhead. And then we've just got four sets of these. So you'll inhale, shift your weight forward just a bit. And then exhale, shift your weight back, lowering the right hand down. And then we've got three more on your own. So inhaling, coming forward, looking up just a bit. Yep, there you go. Exhale, shifting the weight back, lowering the hand down. And again, you're just noticing the breath. How long and stable is your breath right now? And then on your next one, we'll go ahead and hold. So pause, push down into your left foot, push down into your right knee, hug those points together. Reach up through your right arm, and then see if you can lift the gaze one millimeter above eye level as you soften across the jaw and the face. And then just as we did before, inhaling into collarbone, into ribs, into belly, exhaling from the belly, softening the ribs, melting the clavicle. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe. Noticing really where the gaze goes. Sometimes in simple shapes like this, the gaze tends to dart around. See if you can notice that. And 
Nice work, guys. Your last three breath cycles here. The end of your next exhalation, gently lower your right hand to the floor. Lower the left hand to the floor. Tuck the back toes under and straighten your back leg long. Pause here. Now, inhale, gaze forward. And then as you exhale, start to press your pelvis back, straightening that front leg. And you've got four sets of these. So just inhaling, coming forward, letting the left knee slide over the center of the left foot. And then exhaling, drawing that outer left hip back to melt the sternum towards the shin. Got one more set on your own. And you're just connecting with how your body's feeling for you. How are you noticing movement now? Nice work, guys. The next time you shift your pelvis back, go ahead and pause there. Straighten that left knee as best as you can. Draw the top of your left shin bone forward, outer left hip back and keep lifting through that inner right thigh. Then walk the blocks in a little bit and perhaps back so they're directly underneath your shoulder joint. And then see if you can lift your head so your head is in line with your shoulders, shoulders are in line with your hips in one diagonal, whether you're parallel to the floor or on a diagonal. And then again, we'll continue to breathe into our chest, into our ribs, into our navel. And then we'll breathe out of the belly, out of the ribs, and out of the chest. We've got another five breath cycles here. And just notice where you notice. Nice job. The end of your next exhalation, this is a slight variation. You'll step your back foot to meet your front foot forward fold top of space. Nice. And then go ahead and separate your feet about hip distance apart. Yeah. And then from here, inhale, halfway lift. Slide your hands up, your shin bones, pause. As you exhale, bend the knees just a bit so your spine is parallel to the floor. Yep. Draw one hand to one hip. Draw the other hand to the other hip. Draw your shoulder blades onto your back. Take a big breath in here. And on your next inhalation, draw yourself up to stand. And exhale, release your hands down alongside your hips. Now, if you feel dizzy at all because we came up pretty quickly, I want you to drop your chin to your chest and lift your chin up a little bit. We're gonna take four sets of these and we'll see how it goes. Some of you might want to put a block between your shin bones. Some of you will be happily as a clam to stay without it. So it's just totally up to you. So we're gonna do some dynamic chair poses to help set up the next thing. So inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, bend your knees, put your butt back, hinge at your hips, and lower your hands to the floor alongside your feet. That's one exhale. Then inhale, swim the arms forward, lean back, sit into chair pose. As you exhale, stay here. Next inhalation, push through the feet, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, open the arms out to the right and to the left alongside your hips. That's one set. We'll do three more. Inhale, swim the arms out and up and overhead. Exhale, hinge at your hips, shift your pelvis back, lean forward and lower the hands down towards the floor. Inhale, reach the arms forward, lean back, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, stay here, belly to spine. 
Inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, open the arms out to the right and to the left. Two more on your own. Inhale, following a big, long, deep breath in. Exhale, sit back to chair, lowering the fingers outside of your feet. Keep the knees bent. Inhale, swim forward to sit back into chair pose. And exhale, stay here, navel to spine. Inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, open the arms out and alongside your hips. Last set. Inhale, swim the arms out and up and overhead. Exhale, sit back and hinge forward all the way down to the floor. Nice job, guys. Inhale, swim the hands forward to lean back, chair pose. And exhale, stay here. Here's our next hold. So we'll be here for about a minute and a half. You can lower your hands to heart center if you're feeling anything at all in your shoulder joint. But I want you to notice where you can lift the gaze one millimeter above eye level. Continue to hug into that block if you're working with it. And if you're not, just notice that the knees can track forward over the feet. Yep. And then just as we did before, breathe into collarbone, breathe wide into ribs, breathe into your navel, and then exhale, belly in, ribs soften, sternum mount. Nice work, guys. So what we're allowing ourselves to do right now is we're just inviting in all of our experiences. So whether we're experiencing wobbles or agitation or boredom, doesn't matter. All of these things are welcome and we're allowing ourselves to tell ourselves on a deeper level that all aspects of my being, all aspects of my experience are completely okay. There's nothing that needs to be changed or fixed. We just want to remain the observer, watching the sensations as they come and they go, watching the reactions as they come and they go. And you've got your last three breath cycles here. Nice work, guys. Next in breath, stand up, reach up, look up. And exhale, open the arms out to the right and to the left and just take a moment to pause and just observe how is the energy in the body? How is the breath in the body? Cool. So hands all the way down, there we go. And then release that block if you still got it. And then step your right foot back. Prepare for warrior one. So the left foot might need to go to the left a little bit. And today you've got options. We're gonna do a dynamic version into this too. So I would encourage option number one to bend the elbows to their cactus. You can choose to do arms out to the side. You can also bring your arms up and overhead, but we're gonna do a few dynamic things here first. So inhale, elbows or arms open out. And then as you exhale, straighten the front leg, close your arms towards each other. And then inhale, bend the front knee, come forward. And exhale, close the arms, straighten the left leg. And you just have two more of those. Inhale, bending the knee, opening the elbows. Exhale, closing the elbows, straightening the leg. Last one. Inhale, shifting the weight forward. And exhale, closing the elbows towards each other. Awesome. Next in breath, go ahead and bend the front knee, open the elbows out. And we're gonna pause here. Shift your weight forward in the torso just a bit. And this is our next hold. Now, once you be here, I want you to see if you can retain that breath. So inhaling into collarbone, into wrist, into belly. Softening belly, softening ribs, melting collarbone. 
And we'll just notice what we notice here. And you're just pausing and you're breathing with the arms in this orientation. There is a very different thing that's being taxed. You might start to notice the inner right groin, the outside edge of the left glute. You're just noticing what you notice. And again, reminding ourselves that we can take it all in. There's no part of ourselves that we have to limit, that we can't handle, that we can't experience. In many ways, it allows us to sort of free up our experience as human beings with all these gamut of feelings and emotions and thoughts and experiences that we have if we remind ourselves moment to moment, breath to breath, that all of this is something that I can be with, doesn't define me. We've got another five breath cycles. See how smooth and how steady you can make the breath. See if you can keep the gaze steady. Nice job. Next in breath, go ahead and lower the arms and step to the top of your space. Just pause. Notice what you notice. And then we'll go ahead and try this on the other side. So keep your right foot forward, step your left foot back. Maybe step it a little bit to the left and bend your front knee. Now on this side, I will encourage arms out to the side straight. And then we'll have the variation once we get to warrior one to bring the arms overhead. But for the first part, we'll keep the arms straight. So take a big breath in here and then exhale, straighten the front leg and close the arms together. And you've got three more of these, inhaling, bending the front knee, heart coming forward. And exhale, straightening the front leg, closing arms together. And you're just noticing that even here, can you pitch the heart forward just a little bit of the pelvis? It takes out some of the compression within the lumbar spine, especially if you're feeling like your low back is bothering you at all. Pitch the sternum forward a bit over the front knee, so it's in front of the pelvis more so than on top of the pelvis, and that'll help with that. Okay, and then the next time you're forward into warrior one, you'll pause. You might keep your arms out to the right and to the left. You might bend the elbows down alongside your hips, or you might reach your arms up and overhead. But here's our next hold. And so you'll just notice and you'll breathe. And you'll see how you're doing. And again, the awareness is back to the breath. My teacher talks a lot about the breath having the potential to move and change our subtle body. And it's in our subtle body where our thoughts live, where our beliefs live, where the things that unconsciously and consciously create our external world actually take shape. And so by really allowing ourselves to bring our mind back to our breath, we have the potential to shape and change these things in the way that we would like to. So you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing that when sensation comes up, it's welcome. It doesn't define you, never will, never has. We just wanna learn how to be a witness to it an observer of it. We've got about six more breath cycles here.
One more breath cycle here. The end of your next exhalation, you'll step to the top of your space and pause. Lower your hands and just breathe and see if you can remain still. Notice if you can just remain still, letting all the energy do what it's doing and you're just remaining a witness versus a reactor to it. Awesome stuff. All right, let that on. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, go ahead and fold forward at your hips Uttanasana forward fold. Now, yogi's choice. You can grab opposite elbow or you can bring your hands to your low back and interlace your fingers. If you've taken that option, you're reaching the arms straight up towards the sky, shoulder blades onto your back. And we'll take a moment to pause here. Here's our next hold. And you're just noticing if you can keep still here. So to remain still in this shape, the tops of your shin bones right below your kneecaps have to come forward just a bit. When you press down into the big toe mounds and the heels evenly, your inner thighs will spiral back and apart. And then again, we're coming back to that breath. So can you breathe into the collarbones, into your ribs, into the belly, and then evacuate the belly soften those ribs and melt the sternum now up towards the belly button. We've got another four breath cycles here. Nice job. If your hands are behind your back, bring your hands to your bum, release the hands down the legs and to the floor. If you've got something between your shin bones, please remove it and then step yourself back to plank pose. Hands directly underneath your shoulders. You can also lower the forearms down for forearm plank, but we're gonna stay here for a minute and a half. So, once you're established, you're gonna push down through the hands, through the elbows, lift up through those inner armpits, lift up through those inner thighs and lengthen your tailbone back. And as best as you can, we're coming back to that breath. So see if you can breathe into your collarbones, wide into the ribs and then down into the belly and then empty the belly, soften the ribs, melt the sternum. Now in this shape, probably as much as chair pose, the body will start to talk. There will become a point where you'll want to retract from the position. And as best as you can, I encourage you to continue to push into the hands or into the elbows to continue to stay active within it. Um, I notice that for me, when I do these types of practices, the more I resist just being in the sensation, the harder it makes it. And the more I just commit myself to being there in the shape, being in the stillness, being with the wobbles, with the heat, with whatever's going on, the more those things quickly dissipate. So you've got another five breath cycles here. And you're just noticing what you notice. What thoughts are coming up? What feelings or sensations? Take your last exhalation here, and then gently lower all the way down to your belly. Nice work, guys. Bring an ear to the mat and extend your arms alongside your hips. Great. Draw the other ear to the mat. Awesome stuff. Bring your forehead to the mat. Turn your palms down to face the floor. 
And then start by separating your feet about hip distance apart. Reach your legs back as long as you can, energizing all the musculature around the legs and press into the tops of the feet, toenails and big toenails or pinky toenails rather. Lengthen your tailbone back and on your next in breath, you'll start to draw your shoulders up towards your ears and draw your shoulder blades together on your back. And you'll inhale and lift just your chest up and away from the floor. And you'll exhale and hug the belly into the spine. And then you'll inhale, reach your toes so far back that they float up and away from the floor. And then exhale, hugging belly into spine. Now our dynamic movement in this shape will be inhaling, opening your legs out to the outer edges of your mat or space. And then exhaling, closing the legs in towards each other. This is to stabilize our sacrum. So inhaling, opening the legs wide and exhaling, hugging legs in. Two more. Inhale, opening legs wide. And exhaling, closing legs towards each other. And last one. Inhale, opening legs wide. And exhaling, closing legs in. Now you might keep the legs pretty close or separate them hip distance apart. You might keep your hands on the floor as they are or interlace your hands at your low back. But here's our next hold. See if you can keep reaching back through fingers and toes and inner thighs, heart and sternum reaching forward. And then especially if you're experiencing anything in your low back, when we breathe in, you'll still breathe into collarbones, into ribs, into belly, but not all the way. And then exhale, keep pulling belly in, softening ribs and then softening sternum. And you'll do that a few more times because you've got about another eight breath cycles here. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe and you'll notice what you notice. Can the legs stay active? Can the shoulder blades continue to hug onto the back? Can the heart reach forward? Last two breath cycles here. The end of your next exhalation, release your hands and lower all the way down. Bring a cheek to the mat and just pause and breathe. Bring the other cheek to the mat. Awesome spot. Bring your forehead back to the center of the mat. Bring your hands alongside your ribs. From here, come up to hands and knees and then make your way back to downward facing dog. We will hold here for our next pose. So we'll just be here for a minute. Push down through the L shape of your hands. Squeeze your hands towards each other isometrically. Pull your hands back towards your feet isometrically and continue to lift up through happy inner armpits. Now again, paying attention to the breath into the collarbone, into the ribs and into the belly and then out of the belly, out of the ribs out of the chest. Keep the gaze steady and notice if it's a little bit easier to be in this shape this time versus the first time. We've got three more breath cycles here. Gently lower your knees down, coming to the tabletop position. From here, walk your knees, ankles, and shins together. Keep all 10 toes curled under, and then you'll press your pelvis back to sit for toe squat. And for today, we're going to take a mudra, which is called um, a Dili mudra. So make little fists, draw your fists towards each other so your palms face away from you, knuckles touch. And then turn your palms to face up towards the sky and rest them on the tops of your lap. Great. 
Then the palms face up, the knuckles press in, the shoulders slide down the back. And you'll just take a moment to pause and breathe here. So this is called Adili Mudra because it's for Vyana um, Vayu. And it just helps us attune to all the pervading consciousness within us, all the experiences within and around us. And you've just got another three breath cycles here. And if you can stay get steady with the gaze, once the mind wants to wander. The end of your next exhalation, you'll release your hands, come down onto hands and knees, pitter patter your toes, having a happy little temper tantrum if that feels good to you, or shift your weight back for the counter stretch. And you're just noticing what you notice. Awesome thoughts. From here, put your pelvis on the floor and we'll sit down for um, Ardha Mati Andrasana. So you might sit on your blankets, you might just have your pelvis on the floor. But you're gonna tuck your right foot over your left foot outside on the outside edge of your left thigh rather, and your left foot outside of your right hip. Make sure your right foot is pressing down into the floor, yep. Hug your right knee in towards your chest and bring your right hand back behind you. Now inhale, lengthen up through the vertebra first. And as you exhale, draw the belly in on the right side and start to rotate towards the right. Now find a nice steady point for your gaze about one millimeter above eye level. And you'll just take a moment to pause and breathe there. And now as the breath has become a lot more subtle in this shape, perhaps than any of the other ones, it can become very tempting or easy rather to start thinking about other things. And so see if you can keep your awareness really focused on how the breath is moving now. Do you still feel it entering into the collarbone, widening through the ribs and then coming down to the belly? You feel that constriction perhaps by the right thigh against the belly, the softening of the ribs, and the softening of the collarbone. Next inhalation, gently unwind. And then you'll switch sides. So tuck your right chin onto the floor, cross your left thigh over your right, bring your left hand behind you, right hand around that left thigh, and then inhale, sit up tall through the spine and exhale, empty the belly on the left side to rotate towards the left. And then pick a nice steady point for the gaze about one millimeter above eye level. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe. Continuing to tune in and attune ourselves to whatever is happening on the internal body. If the mind wanders, no worries, simply draw it back and notice where the breath is in your physical being. We've got about four more breath cycles here.
Next in-breath, gently unwind. Go ahead and extend your legs long in front of you for Dandasana for just a moment. And you'll flex through the feet, pull the toes back from the knees, the knees up towards the hips. And you'll just see if you can be here in stillness for a moment. Sitting tall through the chest, shoulders down the back, heart lifted, gaze steady. For our next hold, you might choose to stay right here, or you might start to crawl your hands forward, hinge at your hips, and maybe you'll grab your feet. Maybe your fingers will rest just outside of your shins. Maybe your belly might come all the way down towards the floor. Who knows, but you'll come into Paschimottanasana forward fold. Your feet stay active. And again, here we want to pay attention to how the breath is working. So can you breathe into the collarbone, wide into your ribs, into the abdomen, and then out of the abdomen, out of the ribs, and out of the heart. Notice the breath and see if you can stay right there with it. We've got three more breath cycles here. At the end of your exhalation, you'll start to walk your hands back alongside your hips, walk your spine up to sit. And then from here, gently make your way onto your back, making sure your blocks and blanket are easily accessible to you. And I want you to just see if you can like flat down and just lay down and pause. That's good, Julie. And you're just noticing what you notice. How is the energy moving in your body? If your legs are straight, gently bend your knees and plant your feet firmly on the floor. And then from here, you'll press your hips high and plant one or both blocks underneath your sacrum at whatever height feels best to you. You might choose to stay here with your feet on the floor or you might choose to lift your legs up towards the sky. Awesome. And then notice if you can wrap the shoulder blades onto the back, maybe let the arms just hang alongside the hips on the floor. And then that breath that we've been working with, the whole class is made for this one pose. So you'll inhale and breathe into your collarbones, wide into your ribs and into your belly, and then empty the belly, soften the ribs, soften the chest, as you're here, you can really start to visualize your awareness traveling from the top of the spine down towards the pelvis as you breathe in, and then start to travel up the spine as you breathe out. And as you breathe out, it might only get as far as the navel, and if so, that's great. And so we're just working with the breath, inserting now what in this orientation, in this instance, becomes a Kriya or an active meditation prep. We 
You've got three more breath cycles here. And at the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently bend one knee and then the other. Plant your feet firmly on the floor. Engage the backs of the legs to push through the feet to lift the hips and then bring your pelvis down to the floor. From here, you might go straight to Supta Baddha Konasana or straight to Shavasana. I highly encourage you to use support in whatever way feels best to you, whether it's a blanket, whether it's your block. And then just as we started, take the first few bits of breath into this shape to really notice where you can continue to let go of the musculature and the bony structures of the body. Okay, so now that we've got more of our fidgets and wiggles out, continue to notice where you can soften even more, letting the bones become even heavier, letting the muscles become even heavier. Now, as you're here, we'll insert that Creo once again. So as the body breathes in, your awareness travels from the crown of your head down towards your pelvis. And as your body breathes out, the awareness travels back up, resting in the navel center. As you inhale, the awareness comes down the spine, down to the pelvis. And as your body breathes out, the awareness travels back up the spine to the center of the belly. So we're really allowing ourselves to let go of shaping the breath, but instead we're directing our attention, we're directing our awareness to ride on the breath. So the inhalation draws your awareness down the spine. And then as the body breathes out, the exhalation draws the awareness back up to the navel center. The next time your awareness comes to the abdomen, just let it rest there.
gently return your awareness. And just take a moment to notice what you notice. Gently, you'll start to invite enough movement into the body to wiggle and yawn just a little bit. From here, if you're still in Baddha Konasana, bring your hands to the outer edges of your thighs and close your knees together like a book. And then we'll all make our way over to our right side. From here, continue to roll over, press into your left hand and draw yourself to a tall, comfortable seat. And I encourage you to take the opportunity to elevate your bum on a block or a blanket. Just so we can do a little bit of pranayama before we complete our time. So, You'll plant your left hand on the top of your left thigh. It can face up or it can face down. It's totally up to you. Your right hand will be used for Nadi Shodhana. So the thumb will come to the outside edge of your right nostril. The ring finger will come to the outside edge of your left. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. And before we take this, you might want to fidget around just so you feel like you've got a nice stable seat. Right. right hand at the ready, left hand on the top of your left thigh, soften or close the eyes completely, and then exhale all the breath from your mouth. Close your right nostril and draw the breath in through your left. Top of your inhalation, close your left nostril, slowly exhale out through the right. When you need to, you'll draw the breath back in through the right. Top of your inhalation, you'll close the right and exhale out through your left. That counts as one round. We'll take a few more on your own, noticing how long and easy and even you can make your inhalation. Noticing how long and easy and even you can make your exhalation. The next time you exit the breath through your left nostril, no rush, I'll simply lower your right hand down. Now from here, keep your awareness at your nostril. 
And just notice the flow of breath in. And notice the flow of breath out. Ideally, we're striving to keep the breath at the same rhythm, the same length that we just established through Nadi Shodhana. And you might begin to find that as you're here, you can start to rest the awareness outside of the nostrils at the end of the exhalation. It almost feels like there's this spacious void that the mind enters into at the end of exhalation. It's just outside of the nose. And you don't need to force it. It will come when it's ready. You're just noticing the amount of space that's at the end of your exhale. Bring your hands to heart center. Pause. Press the palms into each other. Really receive the weight of the thumbs against your sternum and then lift the heart back towards the thumbs. Lower your chin towards your chest. And just take a moment to say an internal prayer of gratitude for that spaciousness, for that awareness that we each and we each have, it enables us to just be the witness. And then we'll complete by bringing our thumbs to our third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Bring your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And then draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light within me that spaciousness within me honors and salutes the light and the spaciousness within each of you. Namaste.